So let's talk about cancer. What is cancer? It's a problem of cell growth and division. Now, growth is a misleading term because when cancer, cancer when cells grow, really they grow and divide. And so when we talk about division, we have to talk about cells being in a phase of the cell cycle. And so hopefully you recall things like uh, the different phases of the cell, cell, cell cycle. So we've got cells that are in G1. And most cells in your body are in G1 right now. And so cells go through the cell cycle when our body needs more cells. So what are the phases of the cell cycle? We have G1 or the gap phase or the growth one phase. And that's when cells are you know, typically sitting there doing their function. They're functioning as a kidney cell or a liver cell or a muscle cell. And cells are in G1. And only when we need more cells will cells go through the cell cycle. So they'll enter S phase, which is when DNA synthesis occurs and the genome becomes replicated. Then there'll be a, a gap phase, G2 phase, before the mitotic phase, where the cells undergo mitosis, and you have the production of two daughter cells. So this process is very really highly regulated. Cells should not be going through the cell cycle unless there's a reason to make more cells. So think about it. Why should our body need to make more cells? When do we make more cells? So there are a number of times when we make more cells. Um, if you think about it, you started out as one cell, a zygote, and now you are trillions of cells. So well, where do those cells come from? Your cells went through the cell cycle to produce more daughter cells. Also, um, there's natural death of cells in the body, um, either through tissue damage, so exposure to physical or chemical or biological traumas, or um, just the natural progression of cells um, getting old and not dividing anymore, and we need to replace those dead and dying cells. So there are plenty of reasons to have new cells be produced in the body. And so here I just drew some cells that were in a layer. Uh, I drew a uh, simple um, cuboidal epithelial cells, and now some cells are gone. Tissue damage, possibly, for example. So how do these cells know to make more cells? So cells get signals from other cells, and these signals can be in all sorts of different forms. They can come from outside the cell, soluble signals, like we're going to learn about growth factors. That, so these signals are outside the cell, and they will tell the cell to go through the cell cycle. So if they're coming from outside the cell, either soluble or cells touching other cells through protein-protein contacts, these are extracellular signals, signals coming from outside the cell, telling it it should go through the cell cycle. We're also going to learn about intracellular signals. There are all sorts of proteins and molecules inside the cell that will send a signal into the nucleus to tell the cell it's time to go through the cell cycle. So when cells get a signal to go through the cell cycle, they'll go from G1 to S to G2 to M, make daughter cells, and fill in that location. Okay, so if this is the process of the cell cycle that is highly regulated, uh, what regulates it? So there are a lot of regulators of cell growth and division, and these regulators are defective in many human cancers. So we're just going to cover the basic classes of uh, genes that are defective in human cancer, the ones that no control normal cell growth and division. So there are many genes that produce proteins that promote movement through the cell cycle. So they would, we would call these pro-growth genes that would make pro-growth proteins, and they would promote movement through the cell cycle. In cancer, these cells, these genes tend to be mutated so that, in fact, you get um, movement through the cell cycle when you shouldn't be going through the cell cycle. So that would be um, genes such as oncogenes. Oncogenes are pro-growth genes that are mutated and push the cell through the cell cycle. In uh, humans, um, in normal cells, um, we have, uh, there we go, um, we have oncogenes in our normal cells, but they're not mutated, so they're their normal version, which we call proto-oncogenes. So proto-oncogenes regulate the normal movement through the cell cycle. If proto-oncogenes are mutated, that's when we call them oncogenes, and they promote abnormal movement through the cell cycle. So there are many genes that we're going to talk about that are oncogenes. When they're mutated, they promote growth. And one of the first classes of genes and proteins that are involved that we're going to talk about are growth factors and the receptors that bind growth factors. 
they tell cells to go through the cell cycle. So we're going to learn about those first. There's a whole class of genes and proteins that prevent movement through the cell cycle. So you would say these are anti-growth genes that make anti-growth proteins, and people most commonly know these as tumor suppressor genes. So they stop a movement through the cell cycle. And we're going to learn many genes that make proteins that when they are active, they prevent movement through the cell cycle, prevent cellular division. Uh, a third class of regulators of the cell growth and division are apoptotic genes that make apoptotic proteins that control apoptosis. So apoptosis, uh, you most likely know, is the process of programmed cell death. When cells um, uh, realize that something is wrong with them, they get a signal, either from outside or inside the cell, that something is wrong, and instead of trying to fix it, uh, instead of propagating any errors in the genome, the cell should just self-destruct, will make more cells. So there are many genes that make proteins that trigger cell death. These are apoptotic genes. And so the three of these classes of genes regulate normal growth and division. And in cancer cells, m most cancer cells have mutations in these classes of genes. So cells are growing through the cell cycle uncontrollably. They're not dying and they're causing organ tissue damage, failure, death. So um, keep those classes of genes in mind as we talk about um, and learn all sorts of different genes and proteins. So let's say uh, mutations occur in one or two of these genes that we just talked about, either pro-growth genes or anti-growth genes, and the mutation occurs in that little cell with a red dot, and it mutates in one or two of these important cell regulatory genes. Is that cancer? Typically it's not cancer, but these cells will go through the cell cycle and have a little bit of advantage over their neighboring cells. So you have more of these cells, they go through the cell cycle more frequently, but they still function, they still look normal under the microscope, um, but they're just more of them. So they might produce like a benign, small benign growth. We would say these cells are hyperplastic or hyper, this is hyperplasia, a uh, little too much growth, but again, this is not cancer. These are benign cells. They're not going to damage organs and tissues. Unless some more mutations accumulate in that group of cells. And so now we've got a group of cells that have mutations in one or two of those key genes. And now they accumulate some more mutations in some more key genes. So three or four mutations in, again, pro-growth or anti-growth or apoptotic genes are going to, again, allow cells to go through the cell cycle, maybe this time faster, so much faster that these cells don't even have time to grow. They're not really functioning. They're doing. They're not really doing their job. And so you have uh, morphologically, histologically, these cells look different. They're smaller. They have very little cytoplasm. They don't really go through. Uh, they don't stay through G1 phase very often, and they just keep going through the cell cycle. So um, they're performing a pre-malignant uh, tumor. So they're still benign, but they're uh, only a few more mutations away from um, cancer. So there might be these things, it might be things like polyps or little growths. Uh, it would be dysplasia, but again, not cancer yet. Well, let's say in that group of cells, we have some more mutations occurring. About five to six mutations are thought uh, to need to occur in key regulatory genes that control growth and apoptosis. And if that occurs, in that group of genes, now you have really unregulated growth and division, and these cells are growing so uncontrollably that they start to invade other tissues. So I drew the um, blue cells as epithelial tissue, and now they've invaded the basement membrane, gone into the stroma, into the connective tissue below, and now they've invaded the connective tissue. And so once these cells start invading other tissues, right, we, call, we can call this a neoplasm, and um, this is really malignant uh, growth because these cells are going into tissues they don't belong in. They're damaging the function of those organs and tissues. And so this is really cancer at this point. Uh, it is quite possible that these cells can actually enter the circulatory system through blood vessels in this organ and travel and colonize distant sites in the body. So you have the primary site of the organ uh, of the cancer. So that's where the cancer originated, and some cancers are very metastatic. When they get into the bloodstream after they've accumulated in many of these mutations, they can travel to other sites of the body, the lung, the liver especially, 
and implant there and then grow in that organ and tissue, that secondary site, and damage that organ and damage the those tissues. So uh, when you're thinking about cancer, uh, I just want you to think about the cell cycle and we'll talk about how it's regulated. We'll learn many different categories of genes. Just think about are these genes promoting the cell cycle or stopping the cell cycle or involved in cell death. And then think about the fact that you need a number of mutations to occur for the cell to really become um, cancerous.